right on time. Woo! Welcome to another episode of Unbox Live. I'm your host, Rob Gagne. And I'm your other host, Nate Beck. We have a very interesting um, unboxing that I've, yeah, actually, you came across it. Uh huh. And it's very interesting. Nate, you want to set it up? Sure. We are going to be talking about Drew Estates Freestyle, Freestyle Live. This is going to be a live event on May 12th. So Thursday, May 12th from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So for us here in the Midwest, 6 to 8. Uh, and this is the release of a brand new cigar that will be introduced during the live event. So should we get right into it, Rob, and talk about what comes in this box? Well, I want to set it up a little bit more because sure. I ended up talking to some of the people over at Drew Estate and I, I was really interested why. Like, I mean, they're giving away a Jeep. They have a bunch of raffle prizes. Why the heck would you even care what's going on with um, a new release? Like, why would you want people's feedback? Most cigar companies are going to come out with a new cigar. They're going to have an inside team that is going to check the blend and make sure that it's on point. And then from there, it's like off to production, get all, you know, maybe a press release, maybe yep. some marketing material. And then, then that's it. You know, it comes out, it's a new cigar. Your tobacconist knows about it and probably recommends it to you at some point. Why is Drew Estate going down this direction? Cool. Right. Way cool experience for the consumer. Yeah. In my opinion, what other time do you get to try a cigar before it is being released um unless you're in the industry right never never right never i'm not i if if somebody knows of yep. something that happened like this put it in the comments because mm -hmm. i want to know i was racking my brain while we were doing this and we were kind of spitballing i'm like i don't think any other companies have done this because you and i for sure have had cigars pre-release yes. right i have you have correct yeah because you're more connected to the industry right we're at events where things are getting, you know, teased out and they're like, hey, try this one. Don't talk about it, but let me know what you think. But I've never seen one like this where it's an unreleased, as of yet, unreleased cigar. Well, that actually brings up a good point. So maybe if there's like, a, if you're a part of like a fan club almost, like the Espinosa sure. fan sure. club or something like that, you might get to try something earlier. But this is like anybody can go buy it. You don't have to be a part of a club, nothing. So that's what's interesting to me. This is literally going to brick and mortars to be purchased for 40 bucks. There's only 10,000 of them. And then that's, that's it. That's it. And then I don't know. I'm a little bit speechless about how brilliant this is. Yeah. I actually really like it. It was actually fun for me to be in one of my local shops and see this come in, have them open it, show what's in the, uh, show what's in the box I've traditionally never really gone hunting for this type of thing. No, this it is just like doesn't really gimmicky to me. Like doesn't trip my trigger. I don't need yeah. all the extra stuff. I just want the cigars. I want to smoke a good cigar. I'm happy to try new stuff, but I don't tend to be the guy that's waiting in line for the next new release craft beer or the super hard to find bourbon that nobody can get. Right. I just don't care. If I get a chance to try it at some point, I'm super excited to try it. I just don't want to wait. Like for me, that's a waste of my time to sit in a line and do that. I don't get much out of it. Now, there are tons of people that do, and they get a ton of joy out of doing this. Actually, more power to you. Let's get into the box then, because it does come with quite a bit to offer. I mean, right off the bat, We've already deconstructed these boxes mm -hmm. to get the cigars. And I would say, if you're going to pick one of these up, make sure you get these cigars into humidification yep. as soon as you can. Um, they're not bad. They're hovering in the high 55, 58, 60s, yep. which is great. You're supposed to smoke between 60 and 70. So anyways, it comes yeah, with this so case. You, now the case has, uh, it's not leather, it's... It's definitely vinyl and it does have a smell to it. So I would say air it out, um, but it's very cool. Very nice as far as like, and th that's kind of what the cigars came in was this like. And we've taken them out as you said, yeah. Rob, but the cigars will come in the case inside this cool packaging. Yeah. And then inside this heavy duty paper packaging, they're uh, wrapped in cellophane. 
Yeah, they're, well, the cigars the are cigars all are. individually celloed. Then that's wrapped in another plastic yep. layer, and then it's put in the paper layer. Yep. So ultimately, it's like really nice packaging. And it I is. love the fact that they actually put them inside the cigar holder. Yep, like, and you've got, Matt, if you can great. showcase, says they're made in Esteli. Right. It tells you where they're from, so we know this is Nicaraguan. Yep. So really great as far as like that. You got this badge here that's for... Two things this does. One, this is like your entry badge, plus it has a QR code on the back to get entered into the raffle for the Jeep. Yep. That's really, I yep. can't believe they're doing that. They gave away a Ford Lightning on the first one. Did they really? Yeah. So it's just unbelievable that they can do that. And then that. you get a couple other really cool things. You get, you get a perfect cutter and it's actually, so it's, a really nice substantial cutter and if you can see there kind of with my thumb in the background it's got a cigar rest on it so if you're somewhere and you don't want to set your cigar on the table you've got your own cigar rest here surprisingly that's getting really popular for me with you know what's going on in the world today i'm kind of like less likely to use the ashtray as a rest exactly because you know they're surprised getting wiped down but they're not generally getting yeah, they're sanitized. probably getting ripe, wiped down, but I don't yep. know if it got wiped down before I used it. And then so. we've got, I believe, an RFID wallet. So keep all your information protected. You can actually. And it's got a money. What do you think? It. Maybe six, seven credit cards in here? Well, yeah, I actually Quite a few. use that wallet. So I have one, but my wife ended up stealing it. Yep. So I have. And then one more little tool here. I have five I cards right now. Retrieve this. It can hold more than that, though. I can retrieve this out of here. Let me pull this closer here. Uh, then you'll also get a little tool. And we wondered about this at our local shop. You get a little uh, hex wrench that will actually help you if you need to ever tighten any of the screws that are part of the RFID wallet, both front and back. So you've got the tool to actually kind of keep this wallet in good shape. And yeah, what do you have in here, Rob? Like I have five cards in five there and cards it can go and bigger. it's yeah, you could for sure go bigger, but a nice minimal front pocket wallet. Yeah. It's got a cool clip on the back. It's pretty cool. I mean, for there you 40 go. bucks. Right? I'm just interested in the three cigars, but then all the others, it's kind of like, oh, it's not bad to have another cutter. Not bad to have a sleeve if you really like that kind of thing. Um yeah, ultimately. I'm digging the opportunity just to smoke the cigars. Understand what, because this is, we're smoking it. We smoked it already. Yep. And now we're smoking it again. And we're going to save the third cigar that we get to smoke live. During the event. During the event. Yep. You can do it however you want. You, know, you, you could save them all and not smoke any and smoke one the day of the event. You could smoke before. You could smoke them all before if you really wanted to. Uh, it doesn't matter. But that's what we're doing. So, and the weird thing about this is that, okay, if you scroll down, Matt, official retailers keep scrolling down on that, that these are all the retailers and only these retailers get it. So like yep. if there's one by you, you better go quick. Cause this is week two. These were released on the 11th of this month Yep. and we're behind the eight ball. So we apologize that we're coming at you at this a little bit late, but this is what and it may we have been a little bit winning. later than April 11th because the the two shops here in Minnesota just got them this week. So a couple days ago. So we smoked the first ones on what, Tuesday? Maybe, no, Wednesday we smoked them. Okay. Uh, and I picked them up Tuesday. I think my one of my local shops had it on Monday. So that was, okay. you know, the... That was the 22nd. That was like the 19th. So in your area, it could be the first week. Yep. So this... To be honest, I'm thinking by the weekend they could be sold out. Yep. That's what I'm thinking. They're going quick here um, because of people understand the experience part of it. Yep. Now, why did they go this route? I was like pine at that question for a little bit with uh, one of the reps over at Drew Estate. And it, it's kind of twofold. One, they're not going to PCA anymore. So they have a surplus budget that how else... Do you get people interested in a cigar if you're not going to go to one of the biggest, uh, I don't know, conventions mm -hmm. in the industry where you're trying to basically at that convention influence retailers? 
but they're getting inundated with so much. It's not really, I mean, unless they decide to be a part of this, it's kind of like, they don't know, they're not going to. So I love the fact that this is going straight to the consumer, the people that matter most. Yes. So now you guys get to decide, is this cigar going to be worth my dollars when it is actually released? And I love that they're doing this with local retailers who then have the option to host the live event, put it up on their TVs. So you get a couple opportunities to capture uh, interaction with your customers. They come right. in to buy this, and then you can also tease it out to come in on May 12th, actually watch the event, smoke the cigars, talk about it with your buddies, talk about it with the shop. And it's a great way to engage with your customer base. Yeah, as much as I love my local tobacconists and love their opinions, there's no greater opinion than my own mm -hmm. for whether or not I like a cigar. So I like the fact that the power and the control of me understanding whether or not this is worth my investment is given to me through this experience. This may not be for everyone. And heck, you don't even have to join the live uh, YouTube event that they do. I just want to see what's coming out. Yeah. So I love it. I like the opportunity. Um, we noted a very unique flavor on some of this is like citrusy. It is very citrusy, actually. And it's light. It's medium. Not a ton of depth. Not a ton of body. Almost like I get kind of like citrus or almost like a tropical fruit kind of aroma. And like the very first couple of draws, there's like a great... Uh, kind of herbal, almost slightly fresh mint quality to it. That's really pleasant. It's got a really easy to retrohale, um, kind of not a lot sweetness. of pepper. No, I, which I love, which I would, is unique. If this is coming from the, uh, Nicaragua, typically Nicaraguan is heavier, a little peppier, a little absolutely. stronger, a little bolder. Yep. So but you look at the Herrera Esteli, that has the sweetness that I love. That's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. so now I'm trying to think, okay, if Drew Estate is going to release this cigar, cigar, what line is it going to be in? Or is it going to be a, a totally different line? So is this going to go under Herrera Esteli? Is this going to go under uh, Sh Undercrown? Is this uh -huh. going to go under, right. what is it going to go under? I can't imagine this is going in the Liga family because no. it's not bold enough for that. I don't think so either. I really like on one of my favorite things in cigars that I enjoy. I like a very smooth, silky, oily wrapper. And this has a lot of that. It's not super oily, but it's just really silky. Not a lot of prominent veins to it. And they give you yeah. three different basically sizes. It's a... Uh, what are we smoking right now? Probably like a Toro, mm -hmm. right around 50. And then the one we smoked the other day was probably what, like a Gorda? Yeah, that was like a 60. Or Gordo. Yeah, it was a, was a, a much, 60. Uh, much bigger ring gauge. And, and then, then they we... have a short, or they have a Robusto size uh -huh. that's a little bit thicker ring gauge, but shorter. So all in all, I like the fact of the three cigars being different sizes because that'll affect flavor, but you also get to see the similarities mm -hmm. between all three. Um. Of course, there's tons of like raffle stuff when you go to their website. So mm. in the description, there should be a link to obviously the the landing page that they have here. And on that landing page, they tell you right above that Jeep right there. They tell you, go to the YouTube page. That's where the live is going to be. Go to our Facebook page. That's also where the live is going to be streaming. Uh, but I'll be definitely in the YouTube live to see you bet. how this goes. Yep. And it's, I thought it was interesting as well. Not only do they have prize giveaways for consumers, they also have prize giveaways for retailers who participate in this event. Right. Uh, credit towards, you know, Drew Estate Cigars. So it's, it's kind of a multi-layered uh, involvement. I think is pretty cool. I'll be interested because you said our local shop is going to do a, a an airing of this mm -hmm. and it's later in the day. Mm -hmm. So maybe your shop stays open late. Some, some don't stay open that late. Maybe they'll stay extra if it, if it goes beyond that. So I got to reach out. I'll be in Texas for a cigar festival in Houston. I got to find which of those shops yeah, are going to exactly. have the live event so I can go be a part of it. Look at the list and make sure you, you head over. So really is this an unboxing of like this great thing? That's like, 
absolutely amazing. You got to get it, all this stuff in here. No. If you're catching my drift, I'm actually more interested in the fact that this is a pre-release. Yeah. So an I, and I am too. And, and, and that's saying a lot for people who sometimes get to smoke pre-releases because of our relationships. But for the consumers to be able to do this, way cool. Right. Way cool. And this is right along the vein of our last conversation two weeks ago, talking about like a true blind smoking experience, literally blindfolded, no vans. This is kind of getting there. Yeah, I didn't think of that. You know, we have no bands on this. We do know who it's from and we can look at it. Mm -hmm. But there's there's no information on this, guys. Literally none. Like, that's the mm. fun part. And they're going to tell you during the live, like, what it's all about, I guess. There's like a great, on that retro hail, there's a lot of sweetness there, which I really like. Right. And it sort of finishes with like a, a real light espresso uh, coffee component to it. I dig it. Yeah. What is this Casper the friendly ghost? Good day to y'all. I finally caught up on the live sharing a cigar together at last. Just want to say uh, from all of us here, you guys are very helpful and a joy to be entertained by. Cheers. Let's smoke. What are you smoking, Casper? Let us know what you're smoking. Yeah, man. Cheers as well. This is what we love to do on Fridays. So appreciate that you're all caught up. Um, Roger said, damn, a $40, great price. And here's what I say, Roger. Absolutely great, but I never value the tchotchkes. I have to be honest. I never value. Like, it's nice to get, um, I guess, this wallet if you need one. My wife took mine, so I'm actually happy to get this. <laughs> uh, literally, I had the exact same one. Yeah. I think I bought it for like, 20 bucks or less on Amazon. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's nice, but I'm not going to like, I don't seek the tchotchke things out in buying. I don't either. And no. I don't, I don't want to degrade that if somebody likes that stuff, but I'm here for the cigars and the opportunity to be able to taste it. And then to evaluate it myself, like this is holding a really good burn Yep. and it's holding Nash. Now, when we smoked the Goro, yep. that thing was flaking like a uh, a tree fallen leaves. Like I was like, Whoa, was what is going flaky. on? Yeah. Is it the ring gauge? I don't know. That was causing that. Is it same to the tobacco. actual tobacco itself? As mm -hmm. far as like the consistency of the tobacco, is it just a lighter leaf that doesn't have like a lot, like a hard structure to it? I don't know. But anyways, this one's performing really well. This is what I get into. I Any, do too. Anytime I can smoke something that I have no idea what it is and I get to apply my own, really crappy ability to taste cigars to it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the definition of self-deprecating Rob. <laughs> I don't, I love it. I'm not good at like, Oh, I taste raisins. Like you I'm don't have good to be, at that, you don't but have I to be. love to taste the cigar and go, Oh, I like this blend. And that's uh -huh. what I'm saying right yeah. here. Like I actually like this blend. It's yep. mild, it's medium. And on top of this, I always put these in, in buckets of, could I give this to somebody who doesn't smoke a lot? I would. Because my goal always as a cigar smoker is to get the person who's like interested enough to like give me like a head tilt, like your dog, you know, uh -huh. like when you're talking to your dog and he goes, uh -huh. he tilts his head what? and you're just like, do you want, do you want, do you want to try it? Do you want to try this? Well, nothing gives me more joy in anything, cigars, spirits, you food is to get somebody else excited about trying something new or expanding their palate or getting excited about spending time with their friends. And the head tilt. Do you want to try this? Follow me. You. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much where we're going to go. Yes. Follow me, you idiot. You want to yep. try this? Yep. Um, no, we really, really like this. That's kind of an inside joke, but whatever. Yeah. Um, it, it's just fun. This is fun. And of all the different ways that I've seen over the last several months, people trying to interact with people on platforms that are social, Zoom and this and that. And my screen time, uh, just the screen time alone, I can't deal with a lot of it. I have to do a lot of it for work. I don't want to be on the screen. And so I really like the fact that they're being on the screen. Correct. It's more of like a show I get to watch mm -hmm. and participate in live. Yes. So it's no different than, you know, Watching the live series of The Bachelorette. No, I'm just kidding. I don't watch that. Oh, that's my children. <laughs> no, 
but anything live, you know, you know the Oscars or whatever, uh-huh. it's like, okay, great. This is live. And then, you know, same thing here. Yeah. But I don't have that. to participate. It's great. Yeah. And that's fun that my, uh, that comment from Roger Messner, Roger's actually one of my good friends lives down in the Chicago land area. So thanks for joining in, Roger. Good to have you. Yeah. Great. Price. And then, uh, Matt, if you want to put up Marco's comment, uh, I was unaware of this, but Marco, Marco Marola Jr. says this is now the third freestyle live release. Third? Yeah. I had oh, no idea. I didn't know that. I didn't either. Ha. We're getting educated. I right. Love it. So yeah, if you guys have participated in other live events, like maybe drop comments of like, what did the cigars come out as? They pre-releasing a cigar and then what did it fall under? Was, I would assume the, the, the shade, Perfect. what's the shade cigar, uh, undercrown series with like the ribbon, the yellow ribbon on it. Was oh, that one um, of them? It was undercrown 10. Yeah. Like the limited release undercrown 10. Is that, was, was, was that a I part wonder, of freestyle? Live? That's a great cigar. So makes me think this is maybe part of that similar line. I don't know, man. Uh-huh. How many more of these could you release under underground? I don't know. Or are you going to go somewhere else? Yeah. Cause what do we have for Drew estate? You have click on the, the brands. Yeah. Click on that, Matt. Yep. Go our up brands. to our brands. I'm digging it. We're diving deep. We're going in. Okay. Yeah, so Undercrown Sungrown. It's the Undercrown 10. All right. So there's a lot of Undercrown. I think it's Undercrown 10 that they did that in. Either that or it's the Undercrown Maduro. I can't remember. You got the Florida cigar. Keeps scrolling down. Yeah, the Liga series. Yep. The Florida Sungrown. The FSG, yep. Keep going down. And then we have Nika Rustica. And then Muat. Muat. And Kentucky Fire Kill. Now, I love the Nika Rustica. Oh, and there's more. You've got the Herrera Esteli. I love the Herrera there's, Esteli. Oh, I didn't realize there were four different segments of Herrera Esteli. Yeah. Okay. Get with it. Get with it. Idiot. But the green one's Norteño, which is uh-huh. really like dark and heavy. Deadwood, and- uh, Lauritan, Tobacco Special, Pappy Van Winkle. See now. The bourbon Nerds. These the aisle and all these bottom ones these are more infused cigars isla del sol la vieja ambrosia yeah and that's one of the things drew estate's really known for are their mm-hmm. infused cigars i mean acid is their biggest brand for sure but this doesn't taste infused so oh, now i gotta all. try to put it under nope is it going underneath the underground series or is it going underneath the herrera esteli that's or where, is it going i think it's one of those two I'm leaning towards Herrera Esteli. Uh huh. I'm leaning towards that. But then, if you scroll down the the Nika Rustica, what does that fall under? Is that is that like a a line? Scroll down a little bit. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, one up. That's uh, down one more it? row. Down one more. Oh no, it was up there. It, mm. Yeah, where do we see the Nika Rustica? Is it right above the Herrera Esteli? There. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there it is on the left. Mm-hmm. So, or is that like a one off, like the Muat? But I don't know. It's like that really does kind of toe in on the rustic flavors. I mean, it's in the name, but this doesn't to me seem like a rustic cigar. Mm-mm. It's creamy, the very soft the, retrohale. You think the Nika Rustica is ru- like a rustic mm-hmm. flavor? Mm-hmm. Oh, see, I don't. I find that one very appealing. Anyways, it's fun. This is the fun part. You, Could just, be. you just get to guess a bunch of times and. Hopefully we're wrong. And the citrus element that we got at the beginning, you know, might make me think maybe it's going to go into that Florida sun grown. I don't know. But the wrapper doesn't seem right for that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to see, to find out what it is. So join live, pick up your box. Like I said, this weekend, otherwise it might be out. And if your local shop doesn't have it, you might have to look at that list, call somebody and say, do you mail it? Yeah. Would they mail it? Or would they not? I don't know. I don't know if they would mail this. Yep. Oh, see, my friend Roger loves the Nika. Yeah, the Nika is awesome. Yep. I totally agree, Roger. Yep. That's a great cigar. And you're correct, Roger. You are in Chicago proper, not Chicago land. Ah. <laughs> is Chicago land like not? That's suburbs, if I'm oh, not mistaken. So, it. yeah, I, I blew it. it. I blew it. Totally blew it. Idiot. I want, Oh, there's another comment from Francisco Zabala. I want to know what the three cigars are. Yeah. So Me do too. We. 
but they're all the same blend, mm -hmm. just different sizes of it. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I'm inferring. I wouldn't but see this wrapper is getting oilier as we smoke it. I love it. I enjoy the cigar a it's lot. It's really good. For a blind tasting cigar, this is one of the better, one of the better cigars I've had in recent memory. Yeah. I really like it. But you make, you made a good point earlier. Make sure you get these out of that packaging and into humidification as soon as you get this kit. Um, Cause the cigars are going to need it. Yeah. And if you have, you know, we've got a couple weeks Mm -hmm. By the time that event comes around, mm. if you drop these into humidification, these will be perfect. Let's talk about that. How did we get these humidified a little bit quicker? Because we were yep. just below 60 and we wanted to be above 60, which is where these were at. Mm -hmm. We used our humidimeter, obviously, shout out to those guys. And what what we did is we took them out of the cellophane. You, you actually use the cutter and clip the, the head. Yep. And that allows moisture to go in and out much easier. Yep. Um, just think of it like a, like a bottle. If you're filling a bottle in a faucet, if you poke a hole in the top, it, the air pushes out while the water's coming in. The same thing happens when you clip the head, yep. the moisture can go in and out both sides versus trying to go in the foot and then also push the air out right. as it goes in. So yep. you're just giving it a better opportunity to breathe that moisture into the cigar a little bit easier. Man, I've heard that phrase stacking dimes. Yeah. On the ash, this thing is just, Matt, I don't know if you can see this here. Yeah, it's... It's just literally, like, perfect. You can... Uh, that camera angle is great because it's showing you just how rich that wrapper is. That's a great cigar. Yeah. Well, we have a reoccurring segment here called Ask Boveda. Hashtag Ask Boveda. We want to get into it because there's three great questions that you guys have submitted and we definitely want to answer those live right here. All right, uh, from Robbo. Hi, can I ask, do I need to replace the whole bag when required or just the pack inside the bag? And this is in a comment that was left on our humidor bags themselves the one year humidor bags yeah the one year humidor bag you just need to replace the pack if yep. the bag is not damaged you are good to go yeah so that's a really easy one but yeah it's a great question because you know it makes it sound like the way we write it like replace in a year like the yeah. bag really yeah. like it's a polymer and for the medium and the large bags you're going to want to replace that with the 60 gram pack Correct. because those bags that come the packs that come in those one year humidor bags don't sell we don't sell those. So you're going to want to throw in a 60 gram pack and that's going to yeah. give you a really nice, a really long amount of time in those bags. Yeah. And then the yep. small comes with an eight. So an you eight just pick gram. up an eight gram. Yep. All right. This is from Evan M. I have a cooler fridge humidor with 150 count max. Should I use two or three 69 or 72% packs in it? I'm looking for that 69 to 70% range uh, on his cigars. So what I would recommend, what Rob and I would recommend with 150 count maximum quantity uh, coolador, if you will, or frigidor, you could drop in on the 60 gram size at least six packs because one of those packs will do up to 25 cigars. So you'd want to do at a minimum six packs. And I would say if you're going to do the 60 gram, just throw eight. Uh, you could even do 10 in there. Uh, but mm -hmm. even easier, if you don't want to take up as much space or have as many packs, get yourself two 320 gram packs. And I would recommend 69%, especially yeah. because it's airtight. Yeah. Let's go back to the, well, yeah, let's go back to the question here. So he's trying to reach the high sixties to 70 range. Uh -huh. And with these coolers, d it depends on whether or not you have the temperature knocked way down Right. or up. So whether they say they can press air or not, there's what they call electrical thermal heating, basically, and cooling. So it's not using a compressor, but it's using elect electrical waves, basically, to cool that and heat it or whatever it does. No matter what you're doing, it ends up creating condensation. If, if you take these things apart, which we're doing more research on these because they're just great coolers to store cigars 
but that'll have moisture on it. And then there's a fan that kicks on and there's a hole that literally it drips down into the tray and then it goes out the back. So if you turn that cooling system on more, there's more moisture that it's basically pulling out of the air mm -hmm. right away. And then unfortunately it's not a closed system. So typically in a closed system, what would happen is the, the cold air would move some of that moisture around or the warm air would move it into the air and the cold air would move it out of the air. And that's why you get the condensation. And then in a closed system, the bubble packs would absorb that. But because these systems have basically an out tray, mm -hmm. a, a tube out, the moisture leaves too quickly. So it can cause your Bovida packs to work more frequently. Correct. Because they can't recycle that moisture and then hold on to it. Yep. It has to constantly keep replacing it because it's leaving the actual cooler. Yep. So in that, re in that regard, if you want 69% and you want to either shut the machine off or turn it all the way up to the 70, 72 uh, temperature, yep. you're probably going to do really well with 69. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend going with the 320s because you use one of those for every 100 and therefore then you get a little over. Yep. And then I would take the size 60 and put them in if you have any drawers. Because I like to have immediate moisture in the drawers. Yep because sometimes that drawer is kind of closed off and those cigars can remain a little bit lower. Yep. And then that, and then you just see how long your Bovida lasts. Now I write on the outside of my Bovida when I put them in. I do too. With a pen. Yep. And then I just know, yep. and you know, right there from per performance, you don't even have to mess with the hygrometer. Don't worry about the hygrometer. The Bovida is working. And then if you wanted to go up, then you can go with 72s, take out all the 69s and go with 72s. Yep. So it's a long winded answer, but it's kind of, gives you a couple options. It's the geeky way to do it, it to is. be honest. Like yep. it's sorry we take moisture seriously and you know that's who we are here at Boca. Yep. Well, and I think most people you included that have frigidors or those wine cooler doors unplug them mm -hmm. and just use them as a cooler door. Uh because you lose uh so much of that moisture goes in and out from that port in the back as part of that cooling heating system. If yeah, if it's running a lot. Now Yep. My temperature in my basement stays, and not everyone has that luxury. We live in a colder state. So if you live in a warmer state, turn that sucker on then if you want it mm -hmm. them, them cooler. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's where I'm at. Cool. Let's get on to the next one. Question three. Uh, Joe, I'm assuming most of these cheap humidors come from Amazon. That's where I got mine. I can't keep it in the 70 or even close. Drops to around 60%. Pisses me off. I feel you, Joe, man. I've been, I've been there, buddy. Where to get a good humidor and know they're good. What about acrylic ones? So let's stay here for a second. Okay. So he's referencing our video where we cut a humidor open. What I want to say, Joe, is Bovida could get that cheap humidor to work, but it just requires two steps. One, you got to season with the 84s and you have to use the right amount. Most people screw this up. They don't apply the one Bovida size 60 for every 25 cigars it holds. So w a couple things we need to know about Joe's situation. What's the total capacity of the humidor? Yep. The other thing is, if you don't know the total capacity, do length with height of external dimensions, plug it into the cubic calculator, and for every 200 cubic inches, you need to use one, one. size 60. So that's one way around that because sometimes the manufacturers are way off. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, it's a hundred count. And you're like, no, dude, this is 150 to 200 count. Mm -hmm. Easy. So there's one step. Now let's go back to that question. It keeps dropping. So what's happening then? If it's dropping, either the cigars need the moisture, either the wood of the humidor needs the moisture, or it's just leaking like a sieve. Yep. So at this point, then I always tell people, take those 69s, put them in a Tupperware container or Bovida humidor bag and put the cigars in there and leave them for four weeks. Mm -hmm. We want to raise the, the humidity of the cigars to be perfectly at that 60 range before we start messing. And during that four week period, you get to mess with the humidor, mm -hmm. season it for two weeks, then drop the 75s. If it's leaking a lot, drop the 75s in there. And then you can always increase the amount of 75s because you're not going to lose the life of those. They're just going to be more stable. Mm -hmm. 
So you might get more than three months out of this humidor if you put, let's say if it's a hundred count humidor, you put a one three twenty and a couple size 60, you're yeah. good to go. I have a 40 ish count Savoy humidor and they're kind of mid range price, you know, 150 to 200 plus, depending on the, the quality of that Savoy humidor. And I put six, 69% 60 gram packs in there whenever I refresh it. And in that same video, since you watched it, we had a, a humidor maker from called waxing moon on now how they make the humidor is going to matter. So I would say that's what you need to decide. How much money are you willing to put into it? Cause to your second half of the question is where do I get a quality humidor? The thing that I need to know is how much you're willing to spend on it. Yeah. So that's where it really starts hitting home. Um, what about acrylic ones? You could go Tupperware just to store cigars. You could go coolers. You could go wine doors, whatever yep. you want. Yep. But there's big companies out there that sell, you know, cheaphumidors.com, northwoodshumidors.com. Um, CI sells a bunch of humidors. There's just humidors everywhere. You just want to, what you spend your money on mm -hmm. is what you're going to get. Exactly. So. Yep. Sometimes going to the manufacturer, sometimes I'll go to like Northwoods, I'll, then I'll go to the manufacturer's website. But Northwoods also has like a lot of detail on it. They do. Um, as well as like cheap humidors, they have a lot of detail on their humidors that they sell. So I, it's a very tough question to answer. There's not a great specific, like I couldn't tell you to go here until I know a little bit more. So it's price, construction, and then do you want to really spend all that money or do you want to try to figure out this humidor? Or are you just over it? Yeah. Sometimes you're just over it. Yep. Like, I, I got to get rid of this. Thing. Yep. So that's our Ask Bovida section. I appreciate everyone's comments. If anyone has a comment on this uh, section, which there probably won't be a ton uh, because this is more of an experience than it is anything else, but you can still drop it here and we review those on a regular. Uh, let's see. The wallet and the cutter are pretty heavy duty. Yes, absolutely. Uh if you got this, he must already have it in in hand, and or he's just seeing. I like really that username, Cha Ching. Cha Ching. Cha Ching. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, this is a, a wrap basically on what's going on. And again, if you want your opportunity to try to win a Jeep, that's pretty sweet. It's like a thirty five thousand dollar Jeep. Right. It's pretty awesome. I know. I'll take it especially with the car market the way it is right now. I could use a new car. Yeah, exactly. Literally. All right, guys. Thank you again. Uh, follow us and uh, yeah, like, subscribe, do all that stuff because, you know, who doesn't like this content? Have a great weekend. Thanks for smoking with us. Cheers. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. Cheers.